President Biden embarrassing himself on the world stage while trying to show NATO is united against Russia. Biden in Poland today visiting U.S. troops and refugees. That comes after the commander-in-chief directly contradicted what his own administration has been saying for weeks about sanctions deterring Russia. Let's get something straight. You remember, if you covered me from the very beginning, I did not say that, in fact, the sanctions would deter him. Sanctions never deter. You keep talking about that. Sanctions never deter. You believe the actions today will have an impact on making Russia change course in Ukraine? That's not what I said. You, you're, you're playing a game with me. The president believes that sanctions are intended to deter. The purpose of the sanctions has always been and continues to be deterrence. The purpose of the sanctions in the first instance is to try to deter Russia from going to war. We do see them as having a deterrent impact. And now Biden's causing even more confusion overseas by telling American troops in Poland that they may soon be sent off to Ukraine. Ukrainian people have a lot of backbone. They have a lot of guts. And I'm sure you're observing it. And I don't mean just the military. And you're going to see when you're there, and some of you have been there, you're going to see, you're going to see women, young people standing, standing in the middle of the front of a damn tank, just saying, I'm not leaving. I'm holding my ground. The White House quickly coming out to mop up Joe's mess, insisting American troops won't be going to Ukraine. All right, I'll start with you, Greg. So we've got this constant back and forth between the president and the White House. Let's talk about sending troops to Ukraine. He's talking to the 82nd Airborne. He is literally over there in Eastern Europe and telling them they'll be there and you'll witness it. He even used that verb as well as see it. I don't know what the hell he was talking about. That is, that, it's pretty scary. I mean, when Trump would say something that was considered rash, it was directionally true. That's directionally insane because it's running complete 100 miles away from the truth, or at least, or maybe that is the truth, and maybe we're being lied to. We don't know. When Joe talks to the world, you feel a, a kind of a, a mild embarrassment, like when you go out to dinner with a relative who's not quite all there, and <laughs> you hope that she doesn't snap at the waitress or conk out at the dessert tray. Uh, and, but what you see is what you get. It's not like, it's like you always heard about Trump being different behind the scenes. He was like a... He was like a presidential mullet in reverse, party in the front, but serious in the back. So he would flatter a leader, but then he'd get to brass tacks somewhere else. But now there's a story emerging, or maybe it's just a theory I made up because it's Friday. You know, Putin <laughs> took Crimea under Obama and invaded Ukraine under Joe. And why is that? Because the administrations are essentially the same and they have the same predictable nature. So what was, what was that gap in between? It was Trump. Why did Putin hold off? Because Trump's brand is unpredictability. How can anybody deny this? Putin was like, maybe I better not do it while that guy's around, because who knows what he's going to do? He might bomb my palace. So right now, he sees Biden as kind of a hood ornament for the Obama administration and knew that he could pull it off. And then he invades, which is a clear violation of international law, causes a lot of brutality, because, well, he knew he could. Maybe he was being unpredictable. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was certainly unpredictable as it relates to his claims that... Uh, Sanctions would never deter Russia from going after Ukraine, Jesse. You don't hand Biden a hot mic next to a war zone. <laughs> <laughs> the guy is yeah. gassed from this trip. It's Friday. You strap a teleprompter to his eyeballs and you <laughs> let it rip. This, we can't risk something this crazy. And then the White House comes and mops it up like he's some drunk celebrity. What my client meant to say was the exact opposite of what he did say. And it's not just that, it's the deterrence. They're on the wrong page. Remember when he said, oh, you know, if they take a tiny chunk of Ukraine, maybe we won't yeah. do anything. Or how about he shares the intel with the Chinese, the Chinese just hand it to the Kremlin. The MiG fiasco, the Russians and the Saudis won't take his phone calls. This is a mess. And to act like it's not a mess is a real problem. Right now, we don't know if Biden misspoke mm. and he's not planning on that right. or he's planning on it and he slipped. Now, how scary is that? And you got to think the Russians are looking at this six ways from Sunday trying to figure out what's going on here. We don't know what's going on here either. OK, uh, Katie, th there's a sound I want you to take a listen to. and We'll come to you on the other side of it. 
Putin has issued Russia's energy resources to coerce and manipulate its neighbors. That's how he's used it. He's used the profits to drive his war machine. And that's why earlier this month I announced the United States would ban all imports of Russian energy to make it clear that the American people would not be part of subsidies. The United States and the European Union are going to work together to take concrete measures to reduce dependence on natural gas. Okay, now what's interesting about that, Katie, is that uh, the Treasury Department has assured Wall Street that it can still trade Russian oil and right. gas through June 24th. Right. So what does he mean? Does he mean anything that he says? He's talking about the ban on imports of Russian gas and oil, but the sanctions on that don't go into place until June, unless until, maybe if they even do that. You'll remember that Donald Trump, President Donald Trump in 2019, had a very harsh meeting with the head of NATO talking about this exact thing. You are spending money with Russia. They are going to manipulate you and use this as a weapon. They laughed at him and said he was being too harsh and didn't want the alliance to maintain its credibility when really he was saying your decisions in terms of business and who you allow to control your energy sector are going to hold you hostage once things get hot. Now that's exactly where we are. On the communications standpoint, miscommunications lead to miscalculations, which cause wars. That's how wars start. And the communication from this administration has been so sloppy when it comes to what they say, what they actually mean. And bringing up uh, President Obama in 2014, you know, in Syria, uh, uh, the president there called Obama's bluff when he drew a red line and didn't follow up with it. And Russia also called his, uh, called his bluff. And they went into Syria and they've been there ever since helping with the civilian annihilation in that country. And now they're doing it in Ukraine, knowing that Joe Biden says a lot of things that maybe he doesn't mean or if he's unclear about it. President Trump, he said what he meant and they took him seriously. That's not the case in the situation. And people who are in the United States military uh, stationed in NATO countries that are happening right now are very nervous about a misstatement turning into sure. a miscalculation in a very volatile situation. You know, and, and Jessica, it, Biden has been boasting that he's going to get Europe off of Russian oil, even though we're maxed out on our domestic natural gas production, uh, and he's not increasing the supply. How is he going to do that? I, I think that he's going to have to. He did say when he was in Pennsylvania that he was in completely anti-fracking. I mean, we only had 3% of our oil coming from Russia in the first place, but what he's trying to manage is you know, 10, 15, 20 countries and how they're going to have a relationship with Russia. It's how not about just us. Just manage this country well, and get us is, the but, oil. But this is not just about us. Unfortunately, we just saw that a, a Saudi refinery got blown up today and the price of oil spiked right back up to $113 a barrel. It was down to $96 just a few days ago. There are obviously global factors that's obviously not related to what's going on in Ukraine with Russia at all, and that can happen, and that can slash our supply. I understand what you want me to say is that he's just going to frack us into oblivion, and then we'll be completely energy independent, and yes. everything will be fine. <laughs> I don't want you to say guess, anything. Really? Say whatever you want to say. Well, I said that because, well, Greg at least wanted me to say that. I did. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to say something about the communications part of this. I don't think that the 82nd Airborne or anyone is confused about what we're doing about troops because he misspoke. I do think that what he was saying was, by being in this region, you're going to see the strength of the Ukrainians. They are streaming into Poland right now. Right? Walking across the border, the borders, we hear about mothers walking with three pets and five children, picking up kids by the side of the road. I think that's what he was talking about. And it does seem like everybody is unified here. And I would put it to the table. What would a Republican president or someone besides Biden who you think is more competent be doing any differently at this point? Because to my mind, all I see is that your option is that we're putting troops, we're putting boots on the ground, and then we're possibly heading to a nuclear war, or we're continuing you on this path. The, you give them the S-300, you give but them that the can, Iron Dome. But that can target war. I mean, oh, so we should cower in a corner because we're afraid of what we're going to say? But we're not cowering in a corner, and John Kirby has even said that we're doing more than we're talking about publicly, which is how you want your government still, to operate. They're still leveling the country. They're, they're leveling the leveling. country, but there are also, we hear about that Putin's inner circle is collapsing around him. By the way, that's the effect of sanctions, right? Those are really rich people who are having their money sanctioned. We hear about there was a brigade where Russian troops killed their own commander because they didn't want to fight this war anymore. Mm -hmm. And 
that's all very meaningful. I'm not, I'm not saying tomorrow this will be over, but I think it's really... Say the things we wanted you to say. Yes. Yeah. I already said fracking into but, oblivion. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.